Hello, and welcome to the video walkthrough of Jair and Mustafa Sahail's final project, Baseball Game Simulator based on Statistics Recorder. This project is an application of both the 4th and 6th categories outlined in the CS10 Final Project Specification Document, Statistical Analysis, and Simulation, and a significant extension of our midterm project. This is a baseball game simulator that takes the performance information stored for the teams and runs a simulation of a baseball game based on the player's statistics. The program will use internal algorithms to determine the chance of a pitch resulting in a ball, strike, or a ball hit into play. If the hitter makes contact and hits the ball into the field, the program uses other algorithms to calculate the probability of the hitter getting a hit on that pitch and determines the appropriate positioning of base runners as a result of either a hit or an out. After this occurs, other algorithms will update the graphical aspects of the program, including the visual representations of the base runners, the current amount of outs and runs, etc. This process will be repeated for at least one inning of a game and can be extended to simulate a whole game between two teams for nine innings. To start the program, click on the green flag at the top right of the program window. This action will initialize the variables necessary for correct project execution. The program gives instructions to the user for how to proceed. The user should realize that clicking on Alonzo, the sprite saying the above sentence, when a simulation is running causes the game to restart. While the user can use the functionality from the midterm project, by clicking on the baseball for adding players or the button for updating player information and statistics, the focus of the final project in this document is the game simulation, which can be accessed by clicking on Alonzo, the sprite on the top right corner of the stage. The simulated game is between two preset teams with preloaded player information and statistics, the Giants and the Dodgers. The Dodgers are the visiting team and bat first, while the Giants, the home team, that second. At the very beginning of the game, the user can see the following graphical components. 1. 8 position players at their correct position on the baseball field and of the correct color, orange for when the Giants are on defense and blue for when the Dodgers are on defense. 2. The hitter inside the batter's box, of color blue for the Dodgers and orange for the Giants. And 3. The scoreboard, where the user can see the current inning, the current score for the two teams, and the number of balls, strikes, and outs. Shortly after, the user will see the program saying either ball, strike, or contact. These are the three possible outcomes of a pitch that the program has determined randomly using internal algorithms that incorporate the statistics of the current hitter in the pitcher. For example, if the pitch results in a ball, and the pitcher has already thrown three balls, the hitter is walked, and the program updates the position of base runners on base. First, the program says the fourth ball. Next, the program says walk. Because the batter had four balls. Then, the program updates the position of base runners as a result of the walk. If the pitch results in a strike, and the hitter already has two strikes on him, the hitter struck out, and the program changes the number of outs in that half inning. First, the program says the third strike. Then, the program says strikeout. Because the batter hit three strikes. Finally, the program changes the number of outs by one. However, the most complicated and interesting case is if the hitter makes contact with the pitch. If this occurs, the program uses internal algorithms to determine if the hitter either got out or got a hit, in which case, the program uses other algorithms to determine the type of hit. For example, if the hitter gets a single, the sequence of events in the simulation would be the following. First, the program says contact. Next, the program says hit, because the hitter got a hit. Then, the program says what type of hit, in this case, a single, and animates a baseball moving from the pitcher's mound, to home plate, and then to a specified space to simulate a single. Finally, the program updates the position of base runners as a result of the single. This image shows the program saying double as the type of hit and animating the ball moving from the pitcher's mound, to home plate, and then to a specified space to simulate a double. 
The program updates the position of base runners as a result of the double. This image shows the program saying triple is the type of hit and animating the ball moving from the pitcher's mound to home plate and then to a specified space to simulate a triple. The program updates the position of base runners as a result of the triple. This image shows the program saying home run as the type of hit and animating the ball moving from the pitcher's mound to home plate and then to a specified space to simulate a home run. The program updates the position of base runners and game score as a result of the home run. In conclusion, all of the illustrated situations above can happen in any particular inning of a game. The program itself can be set to simulate one inning of a game, or it can be extended to simulate a whole game between two teams for nine innings. Thanks for watching our final project video presentation. Hope you enjoyed it.